For me, the thing that sets the General Mobile Radio Service, or GMRS, apart from all other low barrier to entry radio services is the ability to use repeaters. The only other public radio service which allows for using repeaters is amateur radio, which, with its proctored tests, isn't for everyone. Judging by the comments and questions I get, I think repeaters are something that might be drawing you to GMRS. And if that's the case, this video might be of interest as I'm going to be showing you three methods I use to find GMRS repeaters near me. Whether you are at home or out on a trip, these methods will give you the best chance of finding a repeater near you. But first, I will tell you that while my first method is one anyone with a functioning internet browser can use, the other two will require radios with some more advanced capabilities. One of the best GMRS radios I know with these particular scanning features that we're gonna talk about is the venerable KG935G from Ocean, and it's available only from buy two-way radios. I'll put a link to it in the description below if you're interested. Method one mygmrs.com. There is one thing every new GMRS licensee should do the minute they get their GMRS call sign back from the FCC, and that's go to mygmrs.com and sign up for an account. I say after they get their license because you do have to be a licensed GMRS user to get full access to the site, but once you do, it's totally worth the effort. MyGMRS.com is the online resource when it comes to GMRS. There really isn't anything else like it out there, and frankly, there doesn't need to be. It's that good. While online repeater directories aren't really anything new, MyGMRS.com takes it up a notch by incorporating a map-based directory, which makes searching for nearby repeaters a lot easier and more intuitive. You simply just gotta click on a repeater you see, and if it's open, MyGMRS.com will provide registered users with the frequency and tone combinations to access said repeater. If it's not fully open, well, it'll provide information on how to contact the repeater owner to request access. You'll see many repeaters on here that might be club repeaters. So they'll advertise obviously for the club by posting their repeater on there. But when you click on the menu, it says, hey, go to our website, become a member, here's how. MyGMRS.com is also frequently updated. It spits out a weekly summary email of all the changes that have occurred with repeaters in a state-by-state -state listing. That way, you'll know right off the bat if there's been a change to any of the repeaters in your area or if a new one pops up. MyGMRS.com also gives information on the regional and national nets. For those not in the know, a net is essentially an organized meeting of GMRS users via radio. They sign up and there's a check-in process which can vary from net to net, but essentially what happens is there's some topic for discussion that's disseminated beforehand or at the beginning of the net, and the person acting as net control calls on everyone signed up for the net in order and allows them to speak their piece in turn. Finally, MyGMRS also features a robust forum where you can engage with other members of the GMRS community even this guy, who refers to himself as the GMRS Queen. While my GMRS is a powerful resource, it isn't all encompassing. There are plenty of repeaters out there that for some reason aren't listed here. These next tips are going to show you how to find potential repeaters near you that might not be listed in a directory. Number two, the travel tone. You might have heard someone mention the travel tone at one point or another and wondered what the hell they were talking about. It's a relic of a bygone era, specifically the 1970s, when GMRS was considered Class A citizen ban. At that time, one group was able to influence enough of the GMRS community at that time to make 141.3 megahertz the default travel tone for that service. To this end, I keep one bank of the repeater channel set up with a CTCSS output tone of 141.3 in all of my big memory radios. When in a new area, with nothing showing up on my GMRS or no cell phone signal to look it up in the first place, I'll go to the channels with the 141.3 tone set and try to kerchunk a repeater. If I get a tone back, I know I'm in business and I'll try to reach out to someone. Generally speaking, using the travel tone would be an indication that that particular repeater is an open one. 
but it still doesn't hurt to ask the first person you make contact with on it if it is an open repeater, and if not, how to get a hold of the repeater owner to get permission to use the repeater. Just remember, if it is a true emergency situation, you don't need permission. Just start talking and try to get help. What do you do if that method's not working? Well, number three, scan. You're gonna need a radio that not only scans channels, but is also capable of tone scanning for this next trick. Set your radio up to scan the eight repeater channels. That's 462.575 to 462.725 or channel 15 to 22 and set it to scan. You'll be listening for a couple of things that might indicate a repeater is being used. If you hear voice traffic, listen to see if there's a tail at the end of the transmission. This is where they've clearly stopped talking, but the radio transmission carries on for a second or two after they stop talking. That's a pretty good indication that a repeater with some sort of timed tail is being used. If you're not hearing voice traffic at the moment, don't worry, there is another way. Just like how people are required to give their call sign at regular intervals, repeaters are also required to transmit their identifier at a regular interval as well. This usually takes place as a Morse code transmission, however some repeaters now use a recorded voice message. Either one of those transmissions would be a good indication that there's a repeater on that frequency. And since you've already tried method number two, you'll already be aware that this repeater isn't on the travel tone, so you'll need to figure out the tone to access it. What you'll need to do is set up the tone scan function on your radio, so that the next time someone transmit or the repeater comes on with its identifier, the tone scanner will then let you know what that output tone is. Then you can take that output tone, put it into your own output tone on your radio and try to access the repeater. However, this is where you might run into some trouble. First, not all repeaters use the same output tone as the input tone. This is called split toning, which is designed to try and defeat this particular method of tone discovery. Some also just don't use an output tone, which is meant to allow users to monitor all traffic on a certain frequency while still being able to hear and communicate with the repeater. In either of these two circumstances, the only option you have left is a reverse tone scan. If your radio is capable of it, you can reverse the transmit and listen frequencies of a particular channel. So you'll be listening for the 467 version of the transmission and transmitting your output on the 462 megahertz frequency directly opposite of how normal duplex operation works. If there's someone within simplex range of you transmitting to that repeater, you'll then be able to hear them and then activate tone search onto their transmission. Once you have that piece of information, you can just flip it all back around, use their tone onto 462, and you should be communicating with the repeater. You could also transmit to them directly using the 462 megahertz side of things with that output tone that you grabbed from the repeater as well. And that would be a legitimately legal way to try to find out who owns that repeater and find the way to get permission to use it without actually using the repeater. Or you could just use the repeater and ask someone really. There you have it. Those are my three methods for finding repeaters near me. Did I miss any? Do you have a particular method you'd like to share? Be sure to post it in the comments after you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, be good.